Hello YouTube, this is Learn Tutorials and welcome. I think it is the seventh GIMP tutorial now. Today I'm going to be talking about four of the select tools in GIMP. So all I did was uh, import two pictures and uh, what a selection is, is a selection is selecting part of an image and it'll only let, um, GIMP will only let you edit um, part of the image that you selected so if I um, so there are uh, four selection tools that I'm going to be talking about the rectangle select tool the ellipse select tool the free select tool and the fuzzy select tool um, so if I click and drag while I have the rectangle select tool selected <laughs> oh wow that's pretty uh, weird but anyway uh, pretty uh, ironic I guess you'd say but anyway so if I click and I drag it'll let me select a rectangle and if I take this paintbrush it'll only let me uh, edit part the part of the image that I selected so I can edit inside the selection just fine but it won't let me go outside of this selection um, because this is the part that's selected it just um, it'll only let me edit um, this rectangle so if I just control Z oh one second um, so anyway if I um, go to select um, you can uh, invert the selection so now instead of selecting um, this box it actually selects everything else um, so I can draw outside of this box fine but it won't let me draw inside of it because everything besides this box is selected right now. So, uh, control Z. You can also do select uh, none or you can do select all, which is, I guess, uh, kind of useless, but uh, I don't know. So, select none. So, uh, let me see so if I um, click on rectangle select tool and this will actually apply to the ellipse select tool as well um, if I make a selection I can change the selection but let's say I want two areas selected at the same time um, if I uh, have there's modes if I have it on uh, replace the current selection which is the one to the far left um, if I try to make another selection it's just going to replace it but if I have add to the current selection and if I select over here it'll have both of the selections at the same time I can also bridge the selections and it'll just be one really weird looking selection I can have um, let me see subtract from the current selection so if I select right here it's going to take this chunk out of the uh, selection so it'll look like this really weird thing and I can also have intersect with the current selection well this is going to do if I um if I uh, select part of this selection it's actually just going to change um, the current selection into the part well okay enough explaining let me just show you so if I have it right here and I let go this part is going to be the selection as you can see it has this weird um i don't even know what you'd call it the weird line right there um this is the only part um of the images that overlapped so um this part on uh, this selection right now is actually in both of the uh other selections so um there i think that explains that <clears throat> one second okay so if I do select none and let's say I make a rectangle or something dumb like that so if I want to make another rectangle that has the exact same proportions as it all I gotta do is um, go down to I think it'll look like this <clears throat> I just want to make sure I have that mode selected so if I click on fixed it'll have a fixed aspect ratio of the current selection so if I make another selection it'll be literally a hundred percent proportional to the uh, previous selection what you can also do is you can type in a ratio 
So if I do like one one, what this is going to do is it's going to make a square. Now this is actually a perfect square. This side is literally as equal as this side because it's a ratio of one to one. You can do a ratio of one to two, and it'll uh, make. <clears throat> I think this goes by width by height. So this is two times as high as it is wide. You can reverse it to one and uh, it'll be twice as long as it is, wait, twice as wide as it is high. I mean, whoops. Or you can uh, do something like, um, what should I do? Nine by one and what this is gonna do is it's going to be really wide. So. Um, that's how to use aspect ratios. Uh, one second. You can fix the width um, by pixels. So if you want to make it 100 pixels wide, um, it'll only um, you can make it however high you want, but it'll only be 100 pixels wide. You can do a thousand if you want, and it'll look like that. Or you can fix the height, which is basically the same thing. Or you can fix the size. So. Um, it's a hundred times a hundred so this makes like this is kind of a really HD picture right now but anyway so this uh, selection is a perfect square a hundred pixels by a hundred pixels so uh, it's a hundred X a hundred so um I can make it like 40 not 40 how about 400 X 3000 and if I click um, it's going to um, make a rectangle that is what was it 4,000 pixels wide and 3,000 pixels high that is kind of 3,000 is a bad number let me just do 2,000 yeah sure it'll fit now so that's what it does let me see the uh, ellipse select tool <clears throat> so if I do select none all the same stuff will apply you can have aspect ratios and all of that junk but what I want to show you is anti-aliasing now anti-aliasing um, as you can see it's checked and what it basically does is any curved or diagonal lines it'll uh, it'll make it, ha it have smooth edges and it'll kind of not blur it but it'll like uh, really smooth it out so if I try to draw it with a hardness 100% while this selection is anti-aliased on all of the uh, curved on um, the curved part or the diagonal parts of this ellipse what it's going to do is um it's going to make it smooth so in contrast if I have one that isn't anti-aliased and if I uh, put it right next that should be good and if I draw on it, okay, one second, okay, so if I get the zoom tool, select none, and if I just zoom in a lot, what you're going to see is you're going to see that uh, this part is anti-aliased, while this part isn't. Now, anti-aliasing kind of looks a lot better right now because it's not choppy and all that, but it depends on your purpose, I guess, but if you want to make it super ugly <laughs> um, then uncheck anti-aliasing but um, what anti-aliasing does is um, it'll just smooth out the curves and the diagonals in this ellipse um, or part of the ellipse I should say and if it's not anti-aliased what it's going to do is it's going to um, basically um, when you make the ellipse GIMP is going to say, hey, is the curve, is part of the curve going to be over here? If so, place a pixel over here. If it's not, um, is this part going to? Then no, it's not, so don't place a pixel there. So it's just going to be like um, the pixel's either going to be there or it's not going to be there. So it makes this really uh, choppy looking thing. But if you uh, have it anti-aliased, what it's going to do is it's going to... I guess do the same thing but then it's gonna like blur not blur how do I say it? it's going to smooth out the curves and the diagonals so if I zoom in a little bit more that's what anti-aliasing looks like it's just going to have 
the pixels, but then it'll like kind of trail it off or something like that. So fit image in window. So control Z, control Z, control Z, control Z. So anyway, so that is the ellipse select tool. The free select tool. What this is going to do is it's going to um let you make selections that aren't rectangles or ellipses so it, um if i click and then if i click in another spot um i can make my own selection shape so if i make a five-sided selection shape all i have to do is just click the point i started with to complete the selection so now it's selected like this and it's anti-aliased just because i left that check there um what let me see what else so if you're selecting a selection what you can do before you complete the selection you can go back and click on one of these and you can drag it around to change the angle and also if you click and then you move the mouse cursor it's going to like um it's not going to be a straight line it's going to be however you move the cursor so um you can uh, move um, all this stuff and you can move this like really ugly thing and m make it however you want so that's really cool and then uh, just click back where you started and you have the world's ugliest selection but let's say um, feathering edges what this will do I think it like let me bump it up because uh, oh whoops that's percent I didn't mean that but anyway I think it's percent so if I leave it at 10, what it's going to do when I select, I'm pretty sure, um, if I select this, what it should do is it should kind of blur the selection out, or it should kind of make it smooth. So this uh, paintbrush is hardness 100%, but since the selection had feathered edges, let me see, zoom tool, select none. What it's going to do is it's going to like um, smooth out the edges of the selection. As you can see, um, the brush was like really rigid, and it had it was 100% hard. But this is really blurred. So I think that's all with this tool. Now what I'm going to go and do is view the image in window. Control Z. Uh, select none so the fuzzy select tool all it does is it selects um, an area based on color so if I select um, this thing it's going to the wall switch is going to select everything that had a similar color that was right next to it as you can see it really isn't getting that much and it's also kind of bleeding out into the uh, wall but if I want to change that, the threshold, it basically changes how sensitive uh, the, um, I, not um, how sensitive the tool is, I guess I would say. So if I want to make it not select that much, um, another way of explaining it is the maximum color difference, as you can see. Um, so it will choose like the maximum color difference from the pixel you selected, and it'll select everything within that threshold so if I uh, reselect this wall switch what it should do is yeah it won't bleed out and it won't be as far either so um just mess around with it and um it'll select more as you raise the threshold and it'll select less as you lower it and one second um I believe that is um, it for this uh, tutorial. Oh, and also one other thing if you have a selection at a layer And if you press delete what you might notice is that it just turns blank white instead of showing um, The layer underneath it so to fix this just click on the layer and add alpha channel I think I told you guys this already, but anyway, so if you click delete again It'll make that part of the um, selected image transparent and uh, wow that looks really weird um, but anyway so yeah that's uh, what um, what it does in alpha channel just 
an alpha channel think of it as allowing transpar transparency if you have one you can make transparent stuff but um, if you remove it it'll just make blank white go there so that is it for this tutorial thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one